Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. Today, we'll be hearing from a 33 year old Tennessee native who now lives in Florida with her boyfriend and two dogs. She works as a sales professional for a transportation company and has a passion for health and self improvement. This competitor did her first show in June of 2018, did four regional shows, then went on to the national circuit, placing 12th in 2019 at NPC Nationals. And after taking time off, which helped her to improve a lot, eventually she earned her pro card in 2020 at the same show one year later. And I'm very much looking forward to having her on. So welcome to the show, Marianne Parks. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing so good. Thank you so much for that wonderful intro. I'm so excited to be on. You're welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. And as you know, I'm going to ask you if there's something you do or think about or maybe a ritual you have before your heel hits the stage. Yeah, I mean, I like to take that moment and right as I'm standing on the side of the stage and take a deep breath and I visualize walking out there confident, performing my routine, looking down, seeing Sandy's smiling face and just, you know, doing what I had practiced doing, you know, for months leading up to it. So I just kind of take that moment in and um, just leave it all out there on stage. That's awesome. I love how you said you visualize Sandy smiling because I never got to compete in front of her and tell you essays. And then I did. And I was like, Oh my gosh, she's smiling. That makes me so happy. <laughs> I love when the judges are smiling. It makes me feel like they really love oh. what they're doing. And I, I got that vibe when I spoke with her too. She's so sweet. And I, I just like that you said that. Oh, yes. I mean, luckily I've, I've done six shows and she's been at four of them. So wow. it's kind of, it, it's um, something that I've had the ability to, to look forward to. And it, it does, it just makes you feel at ease and um it's it's so nice so definitely and I I really want to talk to you actually about the various lessons you've learned in competing and a lot of the growth that you've experienced in your journey and the injury you recently endured so we'll have a lot to talk about um even like relationship stuff so I've got tons planned but I wanted to start off by asking you about the lessons you learned in your first prep because there are a lot of first time competitors who listen to this show Um, and even ongoing competitors, you know, who are experienced, but can still learn from your experiences. What were some of those things that you took away from your first prep or from your first show that has now maybe informed how you are or the way you compete now? Wow. Yeah. My first prep was, um, it was a rough one (laughs) and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize that at the time, um, because I had nothing to compare it to. But um, I was, when I finally made the decision to compete, I was so excited about it that um, I, I just, I, I started the ball rolling and didn't know where to start. I went to an actual opposing seminar locally and um, someone there had suggested I reach out to coaches that, that um, owned a gym in my area. So I did that and they immediately put me right into a prep. Um, and I had been going to the gym, let's say, you know, maybe three times a week, lifting weights, but I didn't have enough muscle when we, when I first started, I wasn't eating properly. I, um, and so I immediately got put on 1100 calories day oh, one. <laughs> so, um, I, I lost, I lost weight. <laughs> I lost quite I'm a bit sure. of weight. Um, and, um, there were, there were no reasons. Mm-hmm. So it's it's um it I, I I survived that prep just through sheer will. I I wanted it so bad. Um and so at the end of it, I you know, 
it's it's so hard when you work so hard you give everything you have and at the end of the day you look in the mirror and you're like I I, I honestly I look sick Mm -hmm. (laughs) I didn't look like all of the the pros that I had been admiring um I I didn't have any muscle to show for it I you know I so it it was rough um there I didn't know it any better my uh, the the coaches they've taught me a lot and I, I definitely don't want to um you know trash talk or or anything because I feel like every every struggle you go through there's a reason and you come out stronger um but I my I did not have any idea my suit my hair my makeup my makeup my first show was literally the same color as my face <laughs> it was so bad um I, I I just chose the the local um one that was you know a, um, attached to the show I didn't know anything I didn't have a single friend that um competed I didn't have anyone to ask I was um the only athlete that they were coaching so I was kind of in my own world and um really had to stumble <laughs> um, and figure out things by making all those mistakes. So that, that first show was, was rough. Um, luckily afterwards, food did go up and um, things got a little bit better from there. And I, I just, I kept going um, because I, I, I wasn't where I wanted to be. I, I wanted, I had this idea of a physique that I wanted and I wanted to be proud of uh, I was far from that. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I just kept going and it, it definitely, it, it got better, but um, it, that first prep was, um, was uh, one for the records. <laughs> yeah. I really wish I could go back in time and be like, Celeste, take the time to grow before you prep. Um, but I don't like you learn, right. You live and learn. And I love how you can reflect on your experience and recognize like, you know, the will got me through the desire got me through, but there's better approaches out there. And this past year, 2020 was one of a lot of growth and improvement for you. And I assume this is in an effort to actually create that physique of yours that you had envisioned and which you really wanted, not the one that looked not muscular or sick and how you wanted, you know, didn't want to look, but the one that you really wanted Mm -hmm. to bring as a competitor. So what was it? throughout 2020 and maybe after, you know, your your 2019 season that helped you to grow as much as you could before competing at the end of the year and earning your pro card? Well, um, so when I competed at nationals in um, 2019, I I was still with my original coaches. Um, I'd went there with them and, you know, I, I was very loyal um, and the, I was just terrified of cutting ties and, you know, I work out there, they own the gym. It, I just, I, I, that whole idea of leaving them um, was really hard for me, but considering how nationals went and how they were and how they treated me that event, um, it really gave me that push to, to, stand up for myself and um, actually at nationals I went and reached out to my current coach Casey Marshall from Team Boss Bodies and I said you know I'm I'm here I'm alone I really would like to to work with you can I just meet you and I went and met her and um, basically I signed up right away and every what what caused me to grow is her approach and everything that she did for me. Um, the biggest thing was just feeding me. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, she actually fed me. (laughs) Um, I, I got food and, um, you know, the training, the effort was always there. Um, I was always killing myself in the gym, but if you're, if you're just not eating enough, you're, you're not going to see those changes. Um, and the training was different. I definitely had a different approach, um, than what I was used to a lot higher volume, but it worked. I mean, I, I definitely saw a lot of changes, um, in 2020 and with COVID it was, it was a nutty year. Um, but 
for me, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise because I needed the time. And with everything getting shut down, I had more time. I had all the national shows were getting pushed back. Um, I went from working, you know, seeing customers in person to working at home and having more flexibility with my schedule. And so I was really able to just live, eat, breathe, train, you know, bikini competition. And, and that's what I did. I, 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 you know, buckled down and I ate and I, I gained weight. Um, I put on, let's see, 21 pounds, um, um, from, from national, like, I think by August, that's when I started cutting. So from November to August, I had gained 21 pounds, <laughs> um, but it was healthy weight. I needed to, to, to gain that obviously. And, um, I, I became a, like a student in the sport. I, I did everything I could to improve myself. Um, one thing that um, I'm not sure if you're aware of that really helped me in the beginning. So right after COVID started, um, Sean's Couture, I had went to her seminar the year before. She had mm -hmm. opened up where she was doing free posing um, and during COVID. And I would send her daily posing check-ins. And I mean, that my posing has never been easy for me. <laughs> I, I have, I don't have a background in performing. It's, it is the hardest part for me. I can train, I can eat, but getting up on stage and, you know, that it's just not like natural for me. So it's, that's the hardest thing. And so it really allowed me to just focus on what all the things I needed to improve upon. Um, and that's what I did most, you know, pretty much all 2020. <laughs> That's so awesome. You capitalized on the extra time you had to grow as a competitive athlete in the sport and seeing what needs to happen for you to be competitive. And you mentioned a lot of different things that I'm really glad you mentioned, because I wanted to talk to you about them. Um, you had, let me go back, I guess, to how you had competed the same show the year before you placed 12th. And then you took mm -hmm. this time off and you increased your food. You changed your training style. You worked with a new coach. You really focused on your posing. But what was the feedback you received that led you to taking this extended time period off? And how did you then maybe work to fulfill that feedback? So, I mean, it was a resounding, like, you need to grow. <laughs> every, every, everyone who I reached out to um, had, had expressed that. And, and looking at the pictures, I knew it. Um, and then I knew working with Casey that she, she would do what she needed. It, it honestly probably scarred me a little um, because I, I almost, you know, I'm the opposite of most people where they want to just compete all the time. I'm terrified of not being ready or not having enough muscle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, don't put me in. I, let me keep <laughs> growing. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so awesome. um, I just, I kind of waited. I just let Casey kind of make the decision. And um, she, she told me, she was like, all right, I think we're ready. So that, that's what happened. So. <laughs> That's so cool. You really transformed your physique. Like if you guys are listening, you need to check out her transformations. I mean, whether you go on her Instagram or NPC news, it is awesome. And you had mentioned in a post that you gained, or you suspect you gained, I don't know if you measured it, but seven pounds of muscle. And you really can see that in the transformation. This is very inspiring to me. I'm in an improvement season. I'm like, I need to do this. Let's go. Um, and you yes. changed your entire presentation too. Like everything just shifted. And it was obvious that you had really studied the sport, but you mentioned earlier, you gained 21 pounds. And I think some people are so afraid to gain weight in improvement season. Um, and a lot of times that's where they then stop their growth. Cause they're like, well, I'll just hop back into a prep, but you are so committed to being ready, being competitive that you're like, don't put me in. And I love that. So how did you <laughs> adjust or maybe was it ever uncomfortable for you to bring your calories up, um, lift in a new way and 
also recognize that this was necessary for your growth? Like, was that ever uncomfortable for you? Oh, for sure. Um, I'm going to be honest. I kind of lucked out in the fact that it was a like quarantine year. And so I really did get to stay home and throughout most of it. <laughs> and I didn't have to have quite as much interaction that I would have normally um, had to have. But that being said, no, no matter what, when you gain weight, it's uncomfortable. And especially being a competitor, because you're so used to seeing yourself a certain way that it's, it's just normal to, you know, even small increments of weight gain feels like a lot, even though, you know, in retrospect, we're looking at out it from um, an outside perspective, it's not. But um, I mean, there, there was definitely, I, I, I look back like April of last year, um, we definitely overshot calories. <laughs> um, I, I ate a lot. Um, and I was willing to eat a lot. Uh, but I think in April, she had me eating 2700 calories every day. Um, and I gained four pounds that month. And I was like, you know what, that's not four pounds of muscle. <laughs> and so we, uh, we did re- dial it back a little bit. Um, and, you know, we we're able to kind of gradually to increase, but yeah, I kept, I kept gaining. Um, and no, it wasn't always comfortable. I, um, I had to invest in, some some high waisted bikinis, you know, different shorts. I, I basically had to buy a whole new wardrobe <laughs> because um, nothing I I owned fit anymore. But I I'm just I'm so determined. I had this vision of what I was going to look like, and I and I, I just wasn't going to stop until I I got there. So I mean, Casey, I knew she's not going to make me fat like I I think I probably I I don't I didn't test my body fat um but just like if I had to guess I probably got up to like maybe 19 percent body fat like on one of those handheld scale um because I have one of those but it feels heavier and especially after you have muscle when when you have a good amount of muscle and then you put some fat on top of it it looks a little bit different so (laughs) but no it's it's so important especially for new competitors to to get a little uncomfortable if that's what they want I mean everybody's got a different goal you might just it might be a bucket list and you just want to get on stage but if if you want to go pro or you want to get that next level and you need to put on size um you're going to have to ease in a surplus. I mean, it doesn't have to be a huge surplus, but it's got to be a little bit of surplus. And, you know, you're going to gain some fat with it. So it's it's important. And I I definitely think um, that it it needs to be shared. And um, I, I don't want anybody going through what I went through. I wish, you know, I wish any new competitor, take the time, enjoy life. The building time is, is the most fun. That's when you get to eat a lot and train. And that's like the best part to me. Um, preps are hard. <laughs> so enjoy the, enjoy the, enjoy the time that you really get to put in the work. Um, Cause it's, it's where you, you build the, the physique that you, you ultimately display on stage. So. Absolutely. That is so true. And it is really fun, especially if you can let go of the attachment to a certain size and instead just focus on the goal. And you said you kept envisioning yourself and your physique at a certain level. Would you say that the vision you had in your mind was ultimately fulfilled when you earned your pro card? I, yeah, uh, it definitely was. Um, I was so proud of how I looked. Um, I think in everything, it keeps evolving now. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my shoulders are going to get a little bit rounder. Or my glutes are going <laughs> to pop a little bit more. But it's, yes, I, I've i never, I felt so fulfilled. I felt so proud of all of the hard work. I mean, it's, it's like that, I, two and a half years of struggling and to finally 
see what I was hoping I would see. So yes, it was, it was very rewarding um, to, to finally get that. And you had mentioned earlier, you know, your training did look different. You started doing more volume work. Your food of course went up at some points that went up maybe too high and you guys just adapted and adjusted from there, which is great. And I really want to hear more about your process. I'm going to dig a little bit. Um, because Mm -hmm. in one of your posts, you said you had been in the gym for two hours a day, six days a week during your off season. And you were studying the sport, of course, change your posing, all of that too. But can you break down how your training and nutrition changed? Like what, what did you do differently? How did you know your metabolism was firing better or progressing? And, and then how did you figure out what foods and what balance of macro micronutrients would work for you? Cause I know these were all things you were focused on. Yeah. Well, um, so I've pretty much been on macros this whole time. Um, I had the one prep, um, under a meal plan, but, you know, Casey started me on macros and, um, we just, kept increasing and, um, and I, cause I was very lean when we first started. Um, and then the training was different. So I was expending a lot more calories and energy, just training. Um, I, we, I didn't actually no cardio, um, at all during my 2020, um, improvement season. Not so, even steps or anything. No, there was no nice. step goal. Um, I mean, I was active, but yes. Yeah, so when I say I was in the gym a long time, I mean, I was just training, but I think that's, I mean, it's still energy and you're, it was still focused and it, um, it was enough where I didn't need any, any additional um, push, but uh, I think you were talking about Yes. Let's start with how you knew your, yeah. How did you know your metabolism was progressing or getting to where you needed it to be to then go into a deficit confidently? Um, My weight actually finally stabilized. There was a point where um, it was increasing, you know, um, I was on the same calories um, and I'm training, but it was increasing. And there was a point where I think I got, you know, I'm, I'm five, almost five, seven, five, six and three quarters. Um, and I was 141, 142 and pretty much whatever I did, I, I stayed there. So we sat there, I think, um, for quite a while. And, um, you know, we were getting to the point where it was, you know, it was already July, August, and, um, I had quite a bit of weight to lose potentially. I, I basically had no idea how much, um, muscle I'd put on at that point. So we were, we were at the point where we we're going to have to start cutting, um, if I was going to compete later in the year. So. Awesome. Did you do any mini cuts or anything like that? No, there was, there was no looking back. I love that. <laughs> we just built. That's so yeah. cool. So when you were learning more about your body, cause I think improvement season gives you so much opportunity to do that. You were finding ways to prioritize like what kinds of macronutrients you were consuming. And at one point that was really realizing that the best option for you was high protein, higher carb. How did you determine this was working for you or this was best for you? Um, I actually learned that through that one prep I did, um, under on a meal plan. Um, it was with my, my old coaches. Um, I, I was, uh, it was the prep I did for nationals in 2019 and, um, he was supposed to be giving me macros and, or, a, you know, a meal plan and he didn't. And I ended up, I see, I purchased Lane Norton's, um, how to compete, um, in bodybuilding or, you know, uh, I forget the exact title and I learned how to do it myself. I figured out how to, you know, created that calorie deficit. I did figure out how many, you know, how much cardio I needed to do, what food um, I needed to eat. And I was, I created macros for myself and I was losing weight, but I was also not like feeling bloated and wasn't, I didn't have good energy. And finally he got me a meal plan. And all of a sudden I went from 
not eating a lot of carbs because, you know, I was only feeding myself like mm-hmm. 125, 130 carbs. He, um, he gave me a meal plan that didn't really make any sense. Um, I had an option to eat um, a protein source, half a cup, oh no, it was a quarter cup of sweet potato and half a, a carb from the list. And the list had quinoa, broccoli, green beans, asparagus, or brown rice. And hmm. at that point I was just, I was hungry. And I'm like, why would I ever choose a vegetable? <laughs> right. I'm thinking and like there's I, no know, rice and like, quinoa are not the, the same as broccoli. I was like, they are not the same. And it didn't make any sense to me. And I, I know enough about nutrition that I was like, this, this is not equivalent. But, um, he, you know, he, he was like, Oh, it's okay, you can do that. So all of a sudden, I was like, listen, all right, you say I can do it, I'm going to do it. I went, I, my carbs doubled, I was eating 200 carbs a day. But ha- I had like no fat because he in the plan, there was there was no fat. But wow. I felt, I felt incredible (laughs) overnight and I, I felt really good. I, all of a sudden I had energy again and I would never suggest that for anyone. Um, it was not a meal plan that anyone should ever do, but I realized, okay, my body needs carbs. It needs, it likes carbs and I need enough protein because I, I train really hard. So, um, I, you know, I, when I came into the, to the prep with Casey or the, you know, the, um, working with Casey, I told her that I prefer higher protein. Um, I want, you know, I want to be as optimal as possible. Um, I'm, I'm a pescatarian, so I have no issues digesting the protein. I, I digest, my protein sources are fish, eggs, dairy. Um, I digest all of those extremely well. Um, and so it was always easier for me to, to have high protein. And then, I mean, I have enough fat where I'm, you know, I maintain hormones and I make sure that everything's in check, but I, I definitely prefer a little bit lower fat, um, versus, and just being able to eat a little bit more carbs. Um, it fuels my training. It's, it allows me to actually function a little bit better. So I, I've, I've done everything in between. So before bodybuilding, I actually was vegan and I was vegetarian. I actually did keto. So I went the opposite direction. Oh, I, I ate, <laughs> I ate really high fat <laughs> and um, no carb. And so I've, I've experimented before. And um, honestly, my body likes the carbs. Um, mm-hmm. I, I make sure I get enough healthy fats and I'm very, you know, particular about the type of fat I, I get. So I make sure that it's nourishing me, but yeah, that's, I, it was kind of like trial by that experiment. I realized, okay, there, I've, I've learned a lesson from this. <laughs> it actually isn't, you know, isn't bad for me. So <laughs> it's not all bad. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm, I love that you were able to learn from that experience in a positive way. And you just mentioned prior to competing, you were vegan, vegetarian, but you did find yourself suffering from this. Um, you felt like you were aging faster. Your skin was suffering. What led you to realizing that the diet was the reason for this? Well, and I- this is a hot topic for a lot of people. So I don't want, you know, I want to just say before I say that, like everybody choose, you know, their own reason. And there's a way that you could do it probably healthy. It just, it takes a lot of effort. So if you don't have that effort towards your diet, you're going to have some deficiencies. And um, I didn't realize it until I did change my diet and I added in additional protein and I added in fish that, I mean, my skin changed, you know, I I used to suffer from a lot of breakouts and um, it completely cleared up. My nails got stronger. Um, I I was 26 and I started going gray. Um, So it's just, you have to be careful. I, you know, I didn't take vi- um, like enough vitamins. You definitely need to be supplementing if, if you're um, a vegan. So 
um, it's, it's possible, but you know, from everything I've learned, my life lessons, um, I, I know that I need, um, additional protein. And I, I think that it's, um, just not the right choice for me anymore. Interesting. I, one, I appreciate you said, you know, encouraging everybody to do what's best for them, but two, so interesting that you were noticing these different signs and you were able to address it, of course, through nutrition, because we are blessed with the ability to do that. Um, how did you start? How did you start? Did you just go straight into, okay, I'm going to start eating dairy and eggs and fish, or were you just like easing into it? Um, well, I, from, I was, I was vegan for five years and, um, then I kind of relaxed into, to vegetarian. And, um, so I added, you know, I added in eggs. Um, I would just particular, you know, I would do pasteurase or, you know, free range eggs where I felt good about the sources and same thing with the dairy. And so I kind of like slowly added that in. Um, because part of my decision to be vegan was like the morality portion and what I had learned about like, the, the U.S. farming system. And so um, it's not necessarily that I was opposed, you know, if it's done right. I just wanted to, to know where it was coming from. So, yeah, I slowly added in dairy. And, and then by the time I started um, competing, uh, I, I tried <laughs> protein powders. I, tr you know, I tried to figure out how I could get enough protein and I didn't have enough knowledge at the time. Um, I, I realized very quickly, um, just from poor digestion that was, I cannot live on protein powder. And, um, so it, yeah, it was, it was not good. Um, so I, I added in fish and everything relaxed. It was, it was a much better decision for me. <laughs> Yes. Realizing, okay, I, I need to change my diet, but then accepting that that can bring its own challenges and then being willing to face those as well, always being prepared for the outcome. And then you address that. So when the protein powder wasn't sitting well with you, you were able to make a transition and add in more, which I think is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there are people out there Actually, let me ask you this first. What kind of dairy, like where are you getting, when you say dairy as source of protein, what do you use? So um, I predominantly use um, Greek yogurt or cottage cheese. Um, I digest it extremely well. So I understand that not everybody does and you, you may be missing like digestive enzymes. They're not producing enough lactase if um if you can't, but I, I don't have that issue. It, it works really well in my body. Um, I, I've only just recently added in whey protein, um, just because my protein is high that kind of helps me, um, to, to meet everything. But, um, typically it's, it's, um, Greek yogurt or cottage cheese. And I have that in like my dessert kind of that I make up, um, as my last meal. That's awesome. And I think the, the reason I asked you to share that is because I work with a lot of girls in their relationship with food. And I noticed there's a trend of demonizing certain foods a lot of times as dairy and even fruit, just because for some reason, you know, some coaches or some, some competitors perpetuate this idea that you can't have dairy or fruit in a prep. Um, and, and on improvement season, I personally have started loving, like loving cottage cheese and Greek yogurt have become major staples in my diet as well, especially this improvement season. And man, it just makes it easier. I think to get more protein because of it. And I asked you about it because I think, like I said, some people will say you can never eat it. Um, but for you, you digest it. Well, you found that it works for you. Do you cut it out leading into like a peak week? I know, I know usually reverse diet into peak weeks. I just want to hear more about like your process. So leading into a peak week, let's say, or a couple weeks out from a show, are you changing anything about your diet? Yes, but, um, not necessarily removing dairy. I, I, like I said, I don't have any issues with dairy. I, I'm not probably eating quite as much of it just because, you know, every, all, everything's kind of reduced. Um, but I, I going into this last prep, um, I took 
that same idea of, okay, I, I, I spoke with Casey and I was like, listen, this last prep, ironically, I worked really well on high carb. Um, I was having some issues. Um, for me, I like to eat. I like to feel full. Um, one of the mistakes I've made in the past is just eating too many vegetables. So I had to cut out all the things that I know I just, I, I don't digest well. And what I left in are the things that, listen, I, I, I digest this extremely well. So I kind of created a meal plan for myself um, of the things that I can digest. I like it. My body responds. It nourishes me, and also, you know, met my um, my daily micronutrients. Actually, I track all my food, and I use a tracking app, and so it'll tell me, you know, if I'm hitting all of um, my daily micronutrients. And if there's a deficit, I look and say, okay, can I fill this in food? What what could I eat that would fill it? And if not, then I know, okay, I need to take a supplement now. So. Um, yeah, I was, I, I went, I cut out all the, the things I enjoy that I don't like, you know, like cauliflower and broccoli and cabbage. Yeah, those had to go. <laughs> so, um, you know, I ate a lot of squash, um, peppers, mushrooms. I love mushrooms, spinach, asparagus, um, egg whites. I still had, I still had some dairy. Um, yeah. I, I don't cut it out at all, but again, I, I digest it extremely well. So right. um, if you, you know, um, if you're, if you're not digesting it, you could potentially take some digestive enzymes and, um, you know, work on that. But when you're, you know, you lose digestive enzymes, if you haven't had a product or you're potentially, ha you have a leaky gut, um, so, or you have low stomach acid, so. There's definitely things that you could do um, if you're not lactose intolerant. So. Definitely. Again, it sounds like the theme here is just do what's best for your body and do pay attention mm -hmm. to how your body's responding. And something I notice about um, Casey's team, it seems like there's an emphasis on reverse dieting into shows. And I've always found this really fascinating and really beneficial. I see other teams and coaches do this too. And then I know for you, you usually immediately raise your calories post-show. How are you monitoring progress at the end of prep as you reverse diet into a show? And then how are you determining where to bring your calories post-show? I mean, obviously you have a coach doing this, but you sound you sound very educated as far as nutrition goes. And I know it's something you take great interest in. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually was able to reverse into pretty much every prep except for this last one into nationals. And it was, and that was because I had some hip issues going on mm -hmm. um, with my alignment and I, it reduced my ability to do cardio every time I, you know, I was, um, was walking. Um, too long because I, typically I would just do incline walk. Um, I would start to swell. That's because my my hip was out. I got one leg longer than the other, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't wasn't good. So we ended up having to reduce food, and we kind of kept it steady right up into the to the show. But um, typically, you just kind of slowly inch it up until you know you can see how your body responds. And so we did this directly after the show. Um, she bumped me up probably. 400 calories um, right away. And for me, that was, it, and it's not always for everybody, but for me, that it was kind of like a catalyst to, to my engine. I, I, all of a sudden my metabolism just started firing and um, I just needed more food, but I've always had really good communication and tell her, okay, I'm hungry. I'm, I'm not hungry. I'm feeling good. Like I, if you feel good, you stay. <laughs> you probably don't need to adjust anything just yet. Um, but as as that hunger starts to creep back up, as weight changes, um, that's when you would slowly make some adjustments. And so we just we kept in communication, and I said, okay, I'm I'm feeling good here. Energy's great. No, you know, no issues. Sleeping good. Um, so we would stay, and then as I would, that hunger would start to go back up, um, we would increase it. So it, it was like every week, maybe once every two weeks, we kept doing some macro bumps. Um, and I would, you know, I, I would get refeeds too. So, I, you know, it, it just slowly increases as your metabolism, you know, ramps up to be able to support it. 
That's awesome. So when you said you raised your calories 400, this was daily or weekly? That, that was daily, um, awesome. right after the show. So, um, I mean, I, I was still in a deficit probably at that mm-hmm. point. Um, but much, 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 you know, more reduced. So, and then, and then I got received at that point as well. So it was a daily. Well, I really like how you said that that supported you in and really kicked off your improvement season. And, you know, before that though, you had just turned pro, you were probably on this like really great high as well, because this is a goal that you were excited about. Did turning pro change your approach or maybe your viewpoint on yourself as an athlete at all? Um, no, not at how I showed up as an athlete, um, because I kind of had that mentality already. I, I'm always probably the person that's maybe a little too rigid. Um, <laughs> and, and, but I mean, I'm on my food. I, I, I'm on my training. I, I, yeah, none of that changed. I, the only thing that changed is, is, you know, you have to start thinking, okay, how do I want to show up as a pro and, you know, what do I want to contribute and start thinking in that terms. But as an athlete, no, everything else was, is, was exactly the same. Awesome. And through that process, I mean, you already embodied the pro mentality, the pro lifestyle, you turn pro, you had this really great reverse started. Um, and then in January, only a few months post show, you had a really bad skiing accident, put you on crutches for two months. You had to get surgery in February, relearn how to use your leg. And you only just got cleared last week completely to have no limits in your training. And I was hoping you could share more about what happened how you face this challenging time, especially during a strong reverse diet, and then how this impacted your growth into like a pro season. Yeah. So, you know, it has been, it has been a long year. And so I, I say that, you know, kind of COVID was a um, blessing in disguise because it definitely allowed me to focus on training, but it was still a rough year. Like it, there was lots of ups and downs personally, um, you know, for my boyfriend and I, his, his grandfather passed away, um, all kinds of other challenges that we had dealt with. And so, um, you know, after winning my pro card, I, you know, finally being able to, to kind of have that moment to relax, I really wanted to take a, a, a nice vacation and um, have us enjoy kind of like the fruits of all the labor than all the craziness of the year. So um, unfortunately, yeah, I, we went skiing. Um, I'd never been skiing before. I didn't know anything about um, skiing and um, had a really bad fall and um, ended up fracturing my, my tibia, uh, which needed surgery. Um, and yeah, it's like, it was like your, the rug kind of gets pulled out from under you. Um, I definitely was on a high, I felt, um, felt really good. It felt like I was making so much progress. Um, and it, it challenges you, your mind and your mindset. And I think, um, I feel like you learn the most about somebody when things go wrong, (laughs) you know, how, how do you respond to a challenge? And, um, I really wanted to, to take, you know, to maintain my positivity. Um, I feel like I'm kind of a, I'm an, I'm always a glass half full optimist um, outlook. And, you know, I wanted to say, okay, what can I learn from this? What, what, how, you know, what can I do better? What, what, what can I do in this time to improve myself? And so, um, you know, I really took it at, at that, but I mean, it was, it was full of challenges. It, um, I, I have never had an injury that way before. Um, the, the surgery was not easy. Um, your muscles af- after the surgery, they, they, they stopped working. I, I literally had to figure out how to bend my knee again and I could not lift my leg. It just, everything did not respond. Um, the inflammation was, 
really extreme and um, my leg was discolored and purple and cold. <laughs> um, and, you know, I all the, like I went from really feeling good to not even being able to get off the couch and like get a glass of water. So um, you, you kind of really figure out priorities and what you're made of. Um, but I think it definitely taught me that I'm stronger than I think. And I can go through anything um, that's, that's, you know, put in front of me. And um, I am not my body. So I, I'm way more than a bikini competitor. I'm way more than a physique. Um, I am how I show up and how I, I choose to, to, to look at life. And um, I, I really tried to learn and be better um, just from the injury. So that is beautiful. I really appreciate your positive mental attitude as far as a very challenging situation and keeping your sights set on the positives that could come from it, um, which can sometimes be really challenging to do. And you had mentioned that this is not something you regretted um, when you were reflecting on your experience on Instagram. It was like, okay, well, I don't regret going and skiing with my boyfriend on a vacation. And I thought that was a really powerful statement. And you're right. You know, you're not just a competitor and there is so much more to you. How, mm -hmm. how did you come to terms with with that, like, okay, yeah, I still want to do things in the future. Um, I still want to hike and enjoy my life outside of competing when you had endured such an injury, like what kept you positive? Was it, were you focused on it? Were you journaling? Were you doing anything specific? Yeah. So, um, and there were the, those small, rough moments where I had to like just sit in it, um, and, and deep, deep breaths. But, um, I, I, I'd previously been meditating um, and I'd kind of gotten out of it and I started back and um, I started every morning with a daily meditation. Um, I love the Insight Timer app. If you guys haven't used it, they have am amazing free meditations um, that are completely guided. I need it guided. <laughs> I need too. somebody to walk me through that. <laughs> um, and, and also um, Emily Duncan had shared that she was reading um, the daily stoic it's a it's a daily um you know 365 days of um just like a stoic um quote and um some type of message and i started reading that every day was part of my my morning ritual and i learned with stoicism you know you you have no ability to control everything outside of you, not even your body, you're not in control potentially of your health, things could happen, your leg can break. Um, and the only thing you're in control of is your mind. And that's just really powerful. And I wanted to make sure that I kept my mind strong. So um, I just focused on the present moment every day. Um, I, with the recovery, I had a small task I had to do. Okay, at, um, at physical therapy, they, you know, they wanted me to do 10 leg raises, four inches off the ground. <laughs> so I would, I would work my way up and I would keep doing that. So I just focused on like the, what's in, right in front of me. Um, and what else do I, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm such a nerd. Um, I'm always trying to better myself. So I, I just signed, signed up for a Buteco breathing course. Um, I was doing that as well <laughs> during my recovery and I was improving my, my health through breathing. And so I was doing all kinds of stuff to, to try to just stay focused and, um, you know, not dwell on what I couldn't do, figure out what I could do. And that's exactly what I did in the gym too, is, um, I, when I, when I turned pro, um, some you know, you hear the feedback from a lot of pros, they'll say, okay, just jump on the pro stage, see where you stack up. Yeah, no, that's not what I was told. <laughs> I was told by Sandy, by everyone to, to grow and that they, they wanted more shoulders and they wanted um, rounder um, top of the glutes. So um, 
yeah, I was on crutches and I, I couldn't do a lot, but I could do my shoulders. So I was, I was, you know, I was in the gym. Um, I actually went to the gym two days after surgery. I, I, I basically took no days off. <laughs> so um, I, 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 I grew my shoulders um, despite being injured um, and being on crutches. And um, it was definitely made the, the recovery a lot better because I did figure out you know, I had to get really creative. I couldn't do free weights, obviously, on crutches, but I was on. I was figuring out what I could do in machines, and um, I just made the most of it. Wow, that is awesome! You did a lot to focus on your personal development and your, I mean, really your professional development as an athlete too. Um, even when you, other people maybe would have said, oh, you can't do that. Or it's a difficult time to do that. And I actually think it's interesting that you turned to like, um, stoicism type mentality. Cause this is, that was such an interesting topic of some of the philosophy courses I had to take in my degree. I always found it a fascinating one, but it makes sense given mm-hmm. the situation you were in. It's very reminiscent of overcoming a challenge by not overly committing to an emotional reaction to it rather learning through that process. And that's what you did. Um, at least it definitely sounds like you did and you were able to still focus on your goals. Um, I can imagine that would have been challenging. That probably would have maybe changed the course of how you approached your process to growth. But now that you're healed and you're good to go and you committed to that healing process, I was hoping you could maybe reflect back and share if there was anything that you did while healing, maybe, um, in now, not so much a mindset sense, but a physical sense that you think made a difference in your process. You say mindset, um, outside of mindset. body wise. Yeah. Body wise. Outside of my new eyes. Um, so I did all kinds of things trying to help myself heal faster. Um, I, my, my, you know, my bone was broken. Um, they, with surgery, they went in and with a, with the, what they call a button, um, attached it back together. Um, I used the a red light, um, and I would put that on, on my leg 10 minutes every single day. Um, there's a lot of, um, research showing that red light therapy works for, um, for all kinds of injuries, but bones, ligaments, um, you know, skin, there's, there's multiple studies. So I I use that. Um, I took extra supplements, um, just in case. So things that were proven to help with wound healing, uh, which is like, I took HMB, which is a precursor to leucine. Um, I took L-arginine. Um, uh, I, I added collagen, um, to my diet as well. I just, I wanted to be able to fuel myself with every possible thing to help me <laughs> heal that bone as quickly as possible. So um, those are the, some of the other things I was doing as well. That's so awesome. And what a commitment to make to yourself to say, like, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to do everything that I can to get through it rather than becoming a victim of it. And you said you still went to the gym, you were still training as much as you could. Um, how does it feel now to be relieved and say, okay, there's no more limitations. Like what are what is your approach now? What are your goals? Yeah. So, I mean, it feels amazing. Um, and I'm, I feel like I'm in a really good place. Um, oddly enough right now, what I'm, my focuses are, are my imbalances that I already have before the injury. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and that I, I have to figure out, um, to be able to probably do well as a pro. So, um, when I was in high school, Uh, I ran cross country and track and I had a, like a stress fracture. Um, I, I pulled one of my growth plates out of, on my um, right hip. And um, ever since then, my right hip has been off. Um, And it's, I had no idea. It was probably off for 15 years. And I, um, I didn't realize it until I leaned out for a competition and then like my right glute is slightly larger than my left glute. (laughs) So, um, and that's, you know, it's like you were out of, out of balance for 15 years walking around Mm -hmm. your muscle has to work a little bit harder. So, um, and you know, with my first coaches that were in person, um, I didn't take check-in pictures, but when I started with Casey, I, I, it was new to me to take check-in pictures. So I started taking check-in pictures and I realized, 
hey, my, my right shoulder is lower than my left shoulder. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> she pointed that out so, or you did? Um, you know, I pointed it out and yeah, she, she um, mirrored it and it, it was very evident. So last year I actually learned how to pose through it. So I never like fixed it, um, but I figured out how to pose. I would just pull my shoulder up uh, while I'm posing just to, to, so you, it wasn't as obvious. But this, this time after I got off crutches, I, I was like, you know what, I'm way out of whack. I felt all my spine just didn't feel right. Um, so I, I went to a chiropractor and she did x-rays and it, yeah, so my <laughs> my wow. upper spine has a curve in it where it's supposed to be straight, and um, my neck has no curve when it's supposed to have a curve, and my right hip that I have issues with, it was like rotated slightly forward, so um, all of a sudden, you know, this light bulb went off, and I realized, okay, wow, these are big issues that if I don't address now, not only will I not do well as a pro because I'm, you know, symmetry is extremely important in bodybuilding and that's where I'm lacking. Um, but I mean, if you, at my gym, I, I have all kinds of like older people and I can just see them all crunched over and, um, I don't want to be that. I need to fix this, these things now. I want to be healthier. <laughs> but, um, so I'm, I'm really focusing on that. I'm going, um, so I'm going to the chiropractor twice a week. I'm going and getting body work done. I've got all kinds of like really terrible um, muscle knots and adhesions mm -hmm. from having the spine off. Um, and um, so I'm getting that worked on. It's actually helping and I'm figuring out how to, to, to train properly. Um, I had a, a consultation with a trainer um, and I showed him my form and, you know, my shoulder because it was off it was rotated forward I built all this muscle um that's unbalanced um because I was you know holding things so I'm just I'm kind of working through that um but these are all I mean these are tiny things that me it being me I can tell I'm, I mean I'm not um terrible it's just I'm really trying to focus on you know figuring out all the 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 little things so that I'm fully balanced and ready. But um, that being said, I probably, um, we're, we're already starting about uh, talking about competing in the fall um, and doing my pro debut. So we're, we're getting there. I'm just um, working day by day to try to kind of work through the little issues I have so that I'm, I'm ready by then. I think that's great that you're focusing on you know, prioritizing those little things that can make a big difference, especially if you can see those imbalances on stage or over time you feel them when you're working out or they're impeding your progress in any way. And I think that's really cool that you're not only doing that, but you're advocating, you know, for others to do that as well. And sharing that here, of course, is helpful because I think it's important to sometimes take a step back as an athlete and say, like, I may be doing everything I can on the surface, you know, but what's happening underneath that I should be paying attention to. That's also very important. And I think that's, you know, really awesome that you're doing that. And I was hoping you could now talk to us a bit more about like your relationship, because this is also a key aspect of improving a key aspect of expanding as an athlete. You shared earlier that you have a tendency to be very rigid in your approach, which has been beneficial for you, but also sometimes challenging for you. Um, how yeah. did you learn to maintain a healthy relationship with your boyfriend while on prep? Um, did it become progressively easy for you? Or maybe what are some things your boyfriend has noticed change over time and has appreciated for your relationship? Yeah, I mean, it definitely was a learning curve. And it's, it's ha you know, I, I kind of, I'm one of those people who, who learns from making mistakes and realizing, Oh, okay. I, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> so um, it, it's been ups and downs. I mean, I obviously it would be different if you met me now and I was a competitor and that you knew what you're getting into, but that's not who I was when um, I, you know, I met my boyfriend and I, I really changed and kind of like became a bodybuilder overnight and started you know, eat, sleep, breathing, the lifestyle. And um, I've had to kind of figure out a way because, yeah, I did, you know, there are times where I'm a little too rigid um, or I'll 
you know, be stressed from, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, prep and worried about, you know, am I going to be ready or, you know, or complaining about my plan or what's going on and um, bringing that home and bringing the stress home. Um, and so, I, you know, I've had to figure out how to, to maintain um, a little bit better. I, you know, I laugh back, looking at, um, looking back, there was about a year into um, competing we were going to take our first like big trip. We were going to go to Ireland uh, for my birthday and super excited. We hadn't, we hadn't done like a, a big trip since I started competing. Um, and we were in the airport parking lot and he, he's like pulling my bag. And he's like, what do you have in here? Like this, this is way too heavy. He started opening up and he, he pulled out the bathroom scale. Oh my God. <laughs> he's like, you, <laughs> He was like, I am, you are not bringing this. You are not doing this on our vacation. You, you know, and he was like, I am not going to go on vacation with you. If you're, if you're going to be worried about what you eat and how much weight you gain, he's like, that's not, it's over. You, you, you're not taking this or we're not going. Wow. And I had to take a deep breath and realize how crazy I was being. And yeah, you know, of course I was nervous. I hadn't been like off plan like that and not had my the ability to 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 control my food and figure out what I was, was going to do and I knew I was going to be having to start prep a few weeks after that but ultimately I I needed to do that for my relationship I could not mm-hmm. bring my craziness in and it was the best thing I ever did it was I had an amazing time so many memories. I ate lots of food that I probably shouldn't have had and drank the drinks and, and came back and I was a few pounds heavier and life was okay. (laughs) And I, you know, yeah. And everything was, it was fine. And so those are things I, I, I've had to, to realize. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Um, it has been a, a learning curve for me and, it is really important to me that I maintain my relationship. I've heard lots of stories where people lose relationships because of bodybuilding, because it is a very selfish sport. You, you're day in and day out doing something for you. And it is the biggest gift to myself and I love it, but I, you know, I, I, you know, I can't do that. Like I, there was a moment, I think I was having a conversation with my boyfriend and he told me, he goes, your number one priority is competing. And I'm just an afterthought. And it, it broke my heart. And honestly, you know, I had to take a step back and think about what I was doing. And ultimately, especially in a prep. I mean, there's like day in and day out, you have all the have to do is you have to do your training. You have to get, you know, do your cardio. You got to drink the water. I got to do my posing. Um, I, Oh, I have a real job too. I got to get that done, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So it's like at the end of the day, a lot of the times you may not have a lot left to give and, and I realized, you know, you have to put focus on your relationship because what you put focus on grows. Um, and that's obviously why I was doing well and I was progressing. But what about what about the other things that are important to me? What about him? And I, you know, so I, I really took a hard look at, OK, how am I showing up? Am I being a good girlfriend? Am I being a good friend? Like, so I, you know, I started thinking, okay, there's so much I can fit in. There's so much I can change. Um, During a prep, you know, I planned um, dates that were not around food. Um, There was a time we went and got a foot massage. Um, One time I I planned and we went and did cryo. And um, like, I also learned, okay, I can, we both love sushi. He can go have a sushi and I can have sashimi and it works for us. And it's just putting effort and not, you know, not losing track of everything else because it, 
it can, it can overcome you. A prep can take over your life if you let it. So um, I just, I realized that by kind of making mistakes and getting a little over my head that now it's a part of my life and I focus on it, but I also make sure I show up for, for him. And I also check in with friends and family. It's um, something I recently started doing is um, in my, my morning journal, um, I have a gratitude journal and I'll, I'll write down a name of a friend or family that a uh, member that I haven't talked to in a while and I'll shoot him a text or I'll give him a call or FaceTime and staying connected, having those relationships and nourishing them is so important. And um, a lot of times there's, it has nothing to do with going out to eat with them. It's just being there for them. And um, that's something I've learned. And now it's extremely important to me. And I make sure I maintain that no matter what season I'm in, whether I'm in prep or not. Wow. Thank you for being so honest and sharing those experiences because it, it takes a lot to step back and say, okay, this is feedback that I've gotten from people I love in my life and just the way you were experiencing life. And that is not exactly how I want to be living. That is not exactly how I want them to know or not know or experience love from myself. And I think it's really great that you were able to identify that you were able to take that and not as criticism, but rather as information and insight into how you could be better. And when you said, you know, the story about the vacation and, and how he was really real and upfront with you, like, I'm, this is not a vacation at this point. I'm not going to go with you. Did you at all feel like you weren't being accepted for your lifestyle or did you feel like, yeah, I actually needed to hear that. Like that is so true. Oh, I definitely needed to hear that. (laughs) (laughs) I needed to hear that. I mean, there's, there are times. No, I mean, at that point I I was just being a little too rigid and, and I mean, he, he's not one of those people who's like, you like order a dessert or he have this. He doesn't care what I eat. It's my self-control. And sometimes when I start allowing those things in, that's when the control starts to slip. And I know myself. And so that's, that's why I've maintained rigidity, but I needed that. I needed to have that lesson to say, okay, I can have a little bit of this and it's okay. I can learn to stop. I, I know, you know, how to choose off of a menu, even though I have no idea of the ingredients and I don't know how they're cooking it, I'll figure it out and I'll, I'll be okay. And, and we were very active and we're, you know, so it's exactly what I needed to hear. And I needed that kind of like slap in the face, you know, metaphorically. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I think that's so cool. Like it's, it's a good reminder to people listening. And I say this all the time on the podcast, as I'm sure you've heard, is just like, we need to give ourselves freedom in order to relieve the restriction and relieve that fixation that comes from it. And as soon as we give ourselves that freedom, even if it's challenging at first, even if we don't trust ourselves, even if it's a learning curve, eventually we realize we, we can trust ourselves. We do have the power to, like you said, stop ourselves or honor our needs. And then we are more freed up to enjoy life and enjoy the experience we're having versus being so tightly wound, you know, into this one way. And I think it's great that you were able to let that go, enjoy your vacation, come back and recognize you had an amazing time. Okay. Who cares mm-hmm. if the scale was up a little bit, it's always going to go up and down. You're good. Um, and then you move forward. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that and also sharing that you didn't compete when you guys first met, you weren't a competitor. There is a learning curve, not just for you in the relationship, but for him too. And you had been through, or I guess I should say before you got into this lifestyle and before you got into competing, you had really been through a hurtful divorce. You were running before, like you were a runner, you weren't bodybuilding at all. You had felt lost Mm -hmm. in who you were and you were trying a lot of different things and eventually you faced your fear of weightlifting and I think that's really cool but what led you to eventually fully take on this lifestyle and maybe what were some of those other things you tried when you were feeling lost in yourself um so 
when I was 18, I, um, I met my ex and I was with him for 10 years, basically, you know, all, almost all my twenties, my adult life. Um, and I, I knew nothing, nothing else. And so we were married and when that marriage ended, it was, it ended really poorly. Um, he cheated on me. There was a lot of, um, there was a lot of emotional abuse. There was some physical abuse. Um, I, I had let myself, you know, kind of just be focused on, on him. And, um, I didn't have any friends locally. Um, so when we split, I had nothing, I had no one. Um, and it, it taught me so many lessons of, and I was just, I was at a really bad low and I, and I kind of, I had to build myself and pull myself up out of it. And I met my, my current boyfriend and he was incredible. He encouraged me to be me and figure things out. And, um, I did all kinds of stuff. I mean, um, I decided I wanted to, to hike. Okay. I live in Florida. There are no mountains. But I was about to say, wait, <laughs> you know, what? <laughs> where did you hike? So I, so I made, I made us take trips and, you know, we That's started cool. hiking. Um, and then actually that kind of led me into, um, going into my 30th birthday. Um, I, all my friends around me were turning 30 and they were all, you know, like hating it. You know, like, I want to be 30, 30 so old, you know, they were, they were just had a negative mindset about it. And I had come from so far. I was so happy and I was so excited. I, I was, I wanted my thirties to be a celebration. I wanted it to be like the best years of my life. Um, I had a bucket list where I was going to hike Machu Picchu. Um, so we did it. We did a five day hike through Machu Picchu for my birthday. Um, and I got back from that trip and I was just like, you know what, this is it. This is, this is it. This is my year. I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. And I had given myself that goal. Um, and as life goes, most of the year went on and I realized as I was starting to get close to my 31st birthday that I hadn't done anything. And so that's when I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to compete. I had actually seen um, someone in my high school um, post about her competition years back. And I was so motivated and inspired by it. I didn't, I had no idea what, um, bikini competition was after that and I you know I searched it and I was so enamored by it but then also completely terrified because I didn't ah the idea of being on stage just completely terrified me and the you know having to perform or you know the potential judgment of everyone else um really kind of crippled me at that point but you know like I said as I was turning 30, I would just, you know what, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to be me. I'm going to do for me. And um, that's kind of where I started. And competing has given me so much. It, it definitely built my confidence. And I am a strong woman now. Um, and I'm, and that's because, I mean, the strength that I physically have gotten has, has, worn off into my mind I'm just I'm just a different person it's given me so much so it's kind of how it started um and now I can't stop so <laughs> <laughs> no going back now no <laughs> that's so cool I think it's amazing that you tried new things and you took the leaps of faith and you decided to go for it and take on this lifestyle and despite challenges along the way you found that this is really what you love to do and it's something you want to continue to do. And I was hoping you could share like your ultimate goals within the sport or maybe what some of those things are that keep you going. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the people that motivate me the most, um, right now are, are kind of like the older competitors that are just killing it. Like it gives me so much hope and so much drive. I'm, I'm 33. I'll be 34 in July. Um, but I look at like a Jen Ron Beatty or a Camille Perriott, um, you know, or Jessica Wilson or even Angelica Teixeira, you know, 36, 37, 40 years old. 
and they look incredible and I know I can get there. So I, it's not, for me, it's not necessarily about a plaything as much as I'm, you know, I'm going to keep progressing and getting better and better in my physique. Um, I, I'm a small goal kind of person. I, I'm not going to come out and say, I'm going to go for the Olympia. Um, I'd like to, to, you know, to have a well placing um, in my, my first season. Um, it'd be really nice if I could get into the first call outs um, and kind of build a name for myself. But yeah, that's, I'm, I'm, I start small and I just keep, keep progressing and building upon it. So that's, that's kind of where I'm going. I honestly have no doubt you can do it. You have an amazing mentality for one, your drive, you know, for another. And then lastly, your physique is so awesome and you just continue to develop. And I know you'll be really successful and go as far as you want to in the sport. And I'm, I'm glad that I've connected with you and I'm excited to really see that journey unfold. And I'm grateful for the experiences you've shared with us and the knowledge you've brought to the show. And I was hoping now we could hear your best advice for someone who's an aspiring competitor and then your best advice for a competitor who's on their road to pro. Yeah, my best advice for a new competitor is take your time. Please don't jump into a prep if you've never been training before. <laughs> you know, build build something so you have uh, something to 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 reveal and show at that first show. Um, and then just just learn. I, I mean, I was just a sponge, um, trying to learn everything I could. Um, you know, get a good 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 coach. Get somebody who can really guide you. Um, with everything, make sure you're working on your posing, get a good posing coach. (laughs) Those are all things and have fun, you know, Uh, like, don't, don't, don't forget that you're, you're doing this for a reason and really enjoy the process um, throughout the way. And then if if you're trying to go pro, my biggest advice is really listen to feedback. Um, and do what you need to do. So if, if you're told you need to develop more, you need to get out and, you know, start training and, you know, stop competing. <laughs> and, you know, or if it's just presentation, focus on that. I mean, so many, like so many times, it's just the little things. It's just the posing. It's just the hair, the makeup. It's just, you don't have a full package. Just figure out where you're at, where you're lacking and put that effort there. And if you're, if you're determined, you will be, you will get it. Um, Nothing can stop anyone who's determined. Love that. Beautiful words. So empowering. And I am again, grateful for your time here. And I'd love for everybody to be able to connect with you and follow your journey more and really see where competing in life takes you. Um, well, I'm all, pretty much only on Instagram, um, Marianne underscore IFBB pro. Um, but yes, please message me, um, reach out to me. I'd love to, to talk to you. Um, anytime I've had anybody reach out, it's, it's just so nice. Um, I love being connected. I love talking to people at shows. I've been going to shows, even though I'm not um, competing, just to be around it. Cause I, I love the people. I love everybody. So Awesome. I'll put your Instagram link in the show notes page. And I hope that, you know, one day I get to connect with you in person. And I'm sure there's plenty of people now listening who are like, I want to meet this girl. I want to talk to her more. So if there's anything, you know, that we didn't cover in this episode, you guys reach out to her, ask her the questions for yourself, get that support. And you know, that there's, there probably are things you want to talk to her about or just share how much this episode meant to you or maybe things that stood out because that always goes a long way for competitors. And I think it's really special when we can connect in that way in this community. So um, everybody listening, those notes are always at celestial.fit slash podcast. If you scroll down to the category section, all the names are there in alphabetical order. So you could just find Marianne's episode and click it for all the notes, episode timestamps and links. It's, um, that's the case for every single athlete. So if you guys are ever looking for that, you can find that there. And again, thank you so much for coming on. I just so appreciated your time. Thank you. Absolutely. And I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, nights, or morning, wherever you are in the world, while you're listening to this episode, make it up.